How's it going boys? Welcome back to a brand new video and today we're going to be talking about Nice Stalker boys, a Nice Stalker guide. You know, Nice Stalker is actually one of my most played heroes and I play them quite a bit and I usually play Nice Stalker mid but today we're going to be talking about offlane Nice Stalker because Nice Stalker mid is like one of those heroes where it's not an ideal mid hero but you could play him mid. You know, is more Night Stalker the most played position for Night Stalker is offlane by far. But I do think that he is very heavily snowball, especially the first night and the second night. He is the strongest hero on the map. And you can really play him mid if you're good at him. But yeah, I play mid a lot. So uh, once we get into it boys, I'm just going to be talking about the skill build, item build, and everything of that nature because it is a basic beginner's guide. And then uh, I will talk about some key advanced concepts near the end of the video. So to get us started, Night Stalker as a hero, what you need to understand about Night Stalker is that he is a hero that relies on the, he is one of the few heroes that relies on the daytime of like the time of the game. So when it's daytime, he's fairly weak. He's actually really weak during the daytime. His vision is one of the lowest during the daytime. His movement speed is pretty abysmally bad. And just like overall attack speed, everything is just not as good. But once the nighttime hit, that's where the magic happens. He becomes ex the strongest hero on the map. If you're playing mid with a level advantage, you are the strongest hero on the map. No question about that at the five minute mark. And at the second uh, 15 minute mark nighttime, if you play it correctly. So, to get into it boys, as a Night Stalker, what you want to be when you use your, uh, the way how you want to level up this character is like this. So I'll just go through the leveling up uh, process. So level 1, you want to level up um, Void 100% of the time. That is because your silence is super bad level 1. It is abysmally bad level 1 because it, it's like a 3 second silence that does not do anything at all. And then you have a uh, movement speed ability, which, like, it does not work in the daytime, obviously. This is probably one of the worst passives to get level 1, just because it actually does not do anything until nighttime hits. So, some people don't even level it until the 5 minute mark, which is, you know, reasonable, but silence is just worse, so you just level it anyway. Level 2, just get your passive, because, I mean, you could hold the skill point, so you could just, like, not level anything. That's also viable, and if you really need to level Crippling Fear, you could do it, but technically, um, if you're going the offlane, you're probably only level 4 by the first night, so you don't want to um, just not get 2 points to Hunter in the night. And at level 3, you will get Void. You want to max out Void every single time. And the old Night Stalker, you you sometimes skip your ulti because it only turned day into night, right? But and generally, like you don't really need it if it's already nighttime. But now you can have uh, flying vision and flying uh, passing. So you basically have like a map hack essentially. And you get bonus damage which is super nice. So yeah, always get your ulti at level 6. And every single level you can, 12 and 18. And then for your void, you sometimes people want to max this out. Like, uh, sometimes having a 1 point in crippling fear is nice. It is a 4 second AoE stun, uh, silence by the way. Which is pretty damn good. But the problem with this is that a lot of the times, um, unless if you're up against a storm or someone that, like an anti-mage that tries to blink away from you, uh, it's better to always just max out Void. Because the thing about Void is that it is the best skill early game for you. It does, the damage increases significantly and the, the slow duration. Like, it is a mini stun, but the thing about Void is that it's a slow it's a 50% it's a 50 slow on attack speed slow and it's a 50% 50% movement speed slow. So you're moving at 50% movement speed and Night Stalker is already the fastest hero in the game. So you already know how that goes. And it's 4 second duration, guys. Uh anyone who cannot purge this will probably just die to you cuz you will run them down and just bash them down. And then you will try to max out Hunter the Night, get 1 point in crippling fear, max this ability out last. Get your ulti every time you can. And for the talents, I would say all almost 100% of the time in this current patch, you will get void damage, 45 void damage, just because void damage is way too good. 
Oh, uh, think about it, guys. It is an 8 second cooldown, 365 damage nuke. What other hero does that to a single target? Not a lot. Not a lot, I have to say. This is pretty... This is quite a lot of damage. And uh, over here, um, people might think lifesteal is good. Because, I mean, you do need lifesteal, right? You you have a good attack speed. But I would argue that unless if you're trying to play carry Nice Doctor, which is not ideal, you would almost always pick strength. Just because the strength is also HP regen, damage, and like just a little bit of everything. And just more HP. So, yeah, that's good. Uh, level 20 almost always damage because you do lack some damage and movement speed you're already the fastest hero in the game there's really no reason why you want to take movement speed you're gonna be at max movement speed most likely so there's really no reason to and for your hunter in the night attack speed or dark ascension cooldown this one's probably the hardest one to pick because if you're trying to go carry night soccer which sometimes could happen if you're going mid or if you're like a third carry from the off lane but this is good if you're if you don't have like trouble uh, surviving and if you guys take engagements not too often. Almost always in the late game, you always constantly have brawls all the time, so you might want to consider this because Night Soccer is not a hero during the daytime, and that's every five minutes. So maybe you want to consider the cooldown reduction on your Dark Ascension, just so you can use your ulti every sixty seconds instead of two minutes. And yeah, that's basically the build. As you know, Nice Soccer with his ulti can fly, and yeah. So on top of that, I just want to talk about the item build. So for the item build, you're just going to go Quelling Blade, and then you're probably just going to... So starting items always Quelling Blade. Bring enough regen to lane so you don't die. I would always buy like at least one Mango, just because um, you're going to be spamming your Q a lot for uh, last hitting the range creeps. So Q level 1 is only 80 damage, guys. It is pretty low. Well, obviously got buff here because I picked the Void Damage Talent. But it's almost always very low, so you generally only want to use it maybe for a slow, for to set up for a stun, or just um, last hitting creeps. Like, especially securing range creeps. So, you know, uh, most general heroes don't do 80 damage to creeps, and creeps have no magic res. So if you do 80 damage to creeps to your nuke, it's a good way to secure range creeps. And that's all you're going to be using it for. Level 3 Void, you can start harassing people with it. So do buy a Mango or two, get some regen. Uh, Bracer is nice if you want to just tank up and trade people. Like if you want to trade them, right? If you don't want to trade, you can just not go trade. You can even go bottle on Night Stalker some, some games because it is you, you do want to run around the map, secure runes. And bottle is like, if your mid is not going bottle, let's say it's like an Invoker or something. You could just pick up a bottle because if no one on your team has a bottle and you're ganking a lot at nighttime, and you should always gank, guys. Always gank on Night Stalker when it's nighttime and farm during the day. Daytime is your farming time, nighttime is your fighting time. It's kind of like Lycan in that way where you only fight with your ulti. And if you don't have ulti, you don't fight. So, um, anyways, if you don't want to go bottle, you could go Bracer. One is almost like necessary just because if you're fighting a lot, constantly brawling. One is just one of those value items that can help you live in some clutch situations and help you with mana sustain. Phase Boots is almost always a go-to choice because you do need armor. He does not have the best agi gain. He has a decent agi gain, but not the best one out there. And with the Phase Boots, you can run at almost max speed just by like virtue of being nice stalker. Uh, the other option is probably Treads. And the reason why I don't recommend treads is because you or your attack speed is already insanely fast with your hunter in the night. I mean, it is an option, but I generally like going phase boots on these kind of off laners, armor and more damage. So, you know, every hero that has a natural ability that gives you attack speed, such as like life stealers passive and Ursa, you know, like life stealer Ursa, these type of heroes that has a natural attack speed. Uh, buff to his passive generally i like to not go attack speed items on them just because if you have too much attack speed it's more value if you buy damage and if you have too much damage like wraith king with his crit or pa well pa has a build on that attack speed damage anyway but let's say if you're wraith king you have a crit it's almost always better to go attack speed because you need attack speed so just get whatever your hero need does not have naturally so for your second item guys, there's essentially three options you can go. These are the three items. So if you're trying to snowball, 
If you're trying to snowball, you could either go drums. This is very good. It gives you mana regen, helps you chase and uh, even go even faster. Run at fully max speed for the duration. And it's like a good little buff for early skirmishes. I would only get one of these items. I generally don't like going for two because it's kind of like one of those items where it's like a small item and you kind of transition to like a BKB or Aghanims. The second item is not finishing Solar Hecrest, just getting a Medallion. Because this does help you uh, take Roshan in the future game. Like let's say if you don't have a Rosh Taker carry. Let's say you have like a, I don't know, like a Life Stealer carry or something like that. Some kind of physical damage hero that doesn't does not take Roshan very well, and you have no Roche takers, and they have low armor. You could just go uh, for like a uh, this item, so uh, courage medallion of courage, and then upgrade it to a solar crest later on. So after that, you can if you don't want to get this, you could also get spirit vessel. If no one else wants to get a spirit vessel, these items are all situational. I would say if you have like a Ursa carry and you don't really need to take Roche and they all have high armor like a Terror Blade, don't go Medallion, right? If if they have like a Morphling or something like that, Alchemist, always go Spirit Vessel. Unless if you have like position for a Spirit or Clockwork that wants to go Spirit Vessel. And you can always go Drums. Even if your team already has a Drums, you can still go Drums. Just because Drums is like, uh, just like a nice item to have. It, it doesn't matter if you have two of them on the same team. It really doesn't. So besides that, whatever item you choose to pick up, the next item you want to get is either Aghanims or BKB. Almost always. You generally don't need Blink on Night Stalker because you're already super fast, right? You're only going to be fighting at night. You have an insane map hack, which means you can fly over cliffs and you're faster than almost any hero in the game. Only slower than like a few, like a Bloodseeker when he's on Thirst and maybe Lycan in his ult. You're almost faster than any hero in the game anyway. So there's really no reason to go blink and you're not really an initiator guys like all you're gonna the only thing you're only gonna be using blink for is blink in a silence that's about it right you don't have a stun you don't have a ravage yeah silence is nice and stuff but it's not like one of those game changing spells if you know what i mean it is good if you're trying to catch if you guys lack catch definitely go blink dagger but I would either go BKB if you feel like you're going to run in and die. So like let's say you run in the fight and the people are just going to burst you. You get a BKB. If you feel like you're tanky enough and you're like a couple levels above the enemies and you can snowball. I can just go Aghanims. Because the thing what Aghanims allows you to do is that it allows you to clear waves. So something Night Soccer lacks as a hero in general is wave clear, wave push. He does not have wave clear or wave push. So if you get Aghanims, it allows you to do that. If you guys don't know what wave clear is, it's basically how fast you can push a wave of creeps. Right? If you're like Sven or like Lina, you can just nuke the wave or cleave the creeps and they die instantly. But as a nice soccer, you have to kill them one by one. Right? But with this, you can just clear the entire creep wave with one go. That's pretty nice. Almost always you're gonna go BKB because Pipe is not enough for Night Soccer. Night Soccer is not like Underlord. He actually wants to get in there and fight, right? He's like a Slardar. So here, offlane heroes like Night Soccer and Slardar wants to get in there and start bashing people down and fighting them. He does not want to just sit there and soak up damage. He's not like your average Underlord or like, um, what's another tank? Tidehunter, let's say. He does not want to just sit there and get hit. He wants to be the one hitting people. So if you're that kind of hero, you're almost always going to go BKB. Same thing like Legion. You don't want to just sit there and get hit. It does not feel good to just get hit by uh, if you're a Night Stalker. If they have like your Ursa Monkey King, you could just go Halberd. It's almost always good. And I would even recommend going this item first if, you, uh, if you're up against Ursa or like some kind of hero that does a lot of right click damage like a troll that you have trouble with. Generally, you could go Yules if there is a troll, but Yules does not work well with Night Stalker just because it doesn't offer you enough. I, uh, enough. It does give you some mana regen. Uh, what other items? Abyssal Blade. So AC is always a nice item to have on any offlaner. Attack speed, armor, almost everything you need in one group. And also helps out your team, right? Helps you Roche, helps you take towers, helps you with everything. But I would say this is probably like a third or fourth item just because it's more like a luxury item more than like a rush. You would almost never go AC first item on Night Stalker because it gives you attack speed and armor. Yeah, and you already have attack speed and you have somewhat decent armor. You have very good base stats by the way. Night Stalker has amazing base stats. 
He's one of the heroes with the... I forgot to mention this, but Night Stalker has one of the best base stats in the game as like a starting hero. His uh, armor is insanely good. He has good, decent damage and just pretty good strength gain overall everything. Uh, after that, you could go get a Lotus Orb if your team needs. If you have like a Medusa or something, you want to save or a Sven. And that's about it. And oh yeah, a last item. Abyssal Blade is like the end-all be-all. If you could, if you're snowballing really hard, you could just uh, rush this item. Because Night Soccer does have like no actual stuns. His Void, if you guys didn't know, actually has a mini stun. So like, let's say there's an enemy, right? And the enemy starts TPing. The Void is actually, okay. It's not a mini stun in the daytime, that's why. Okay, hold on. So if you're if the enemy is TPing, you could use this to cancel TPs, but it's only at nighttime. It used to be mini stun in the daytime, but now it's only at nighttime, and it's a 0.1 second stun without the Aghanim Scepter. With the Aghanim Scepter, it's like a so it's a 0.1 second stun without it. It's a 0.5 second stun with the Aghanim Scepter, but with Abyssal Blade, you can almost bash anyone down, and you're gonna bash a lot because you're a nice stalker. That's basically it, yeah. And um, neutral items, you know, neutral items, well, it just really depends. Jelly is always nice. Um, uh, Van Brace makes you tanky. Uh, more damage. Nether Straw could be good. Generally, just like any items that's good for carries is good for Night Stalker. He's not, there's no like actual uh, neutral items that is super good on him. Spell Prism could be nice because it lowers your ulti duration even more and that's just, you're almost always ulted now. Like there's only an 18 second cooldown with this item so it's really good. Or you can just swap it in, right? Swap it in, use it, and then swap it back out, give it to your teammate. That actually could work too. And you know, Silver Edge if you need initiation, you can just Silver Edge yourself and go in the back line. Because Night Soccer could just pick off the uh, snipers and stuff. He is one of those offlaners like Legion where you want to go for the back line, right? And uh, what else is there? So item build, skill build. Generally, the thing about Night Soccer, how you want to play. Play in the, again, in the day, you want to be farming. And at night, you want to be ganking. And know your limits, right? Night Soccer is a pretty snowball heavy hero. If you miss your early game timings, you, you generally don't carry as hard as like the uh, uh, actual carries in the game. He's like a semi-carry, he's kind of like DK, where in the way he could carry to a certain extent. But once he gets behind on farm, because he does not farm very fast like DK, and his abilities kind of li limit him to a certain degree of effectiveness, so uh, in the very late game, he will be out carried. But yeah, that's basically all there is for Night Stalker. If I, this is a beginner's guide, so I think I have covered mostly just how you want to play, the item build and everything of that nature. You know, if you guys enjoyed the video, uh, please drop a like below. And as always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the Twitch, check out the Patreon, check out the Discord, check out the anything and everything. Have a very nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.